Hey everybody. Tonight we're going to do a feeding on my 125 here. Uh, I recently added some mineral stones to the canister filter. I uh, just put a handful of them in one of the trays. And the water is still a little bit cloudy in the tank. I did this last night. And then of course after the water changed, the tank almost looked a little bit like it had been muddied up. So tonight we're still just sort of waiting for the last little bit of the cloudiness to settle out. I've checked the pH uh, and it seems stable, so that's good. But for now, we're not going to worry about doing any of that. We're just going to get everybody fed. I always try to get my Tenopoma fed up here in the corner. Because he knows as soon as everybody starts coming over here, these loaches are just, they're so greedy and they want these shrimp. They love these shrimp. So it's a battle between the loaches and everybody else and my Tenopoma. So what I wind up doing is I get everybody over this way by crumbling some stuff and sort of getting their attention. And while they're doing that, I throw some big chunks of shrimp up in the corner. And my Tenopoma sort of sneaks up in there and gets his stuff. And it's a little routine we've worked out and that way he gets plenty to eat and everybody else does too. The loaches absolutely love these shrimp. A lot of times I'll feed the tank with just regular old fish food, you know, just flakes or whatever. And then while they're busy over here, I'll go ahead and throw the larger pieces in for the Tenopoma. But a lot of times I just give everybody in the tank chunks of krill. Because not only does everybody love it, but I've got a lot of fish in this tank that have reds and oranges in them. And if you want to bring out colors, uh, reds and oranges get brought out by feeding your animals krill. If you buy color enhancing food, uh, generally the color enhancers are krill is where you get your, uh, your reds and orange color enhancing, and then algae is where you get your blues uh, uh, enhanced by color. So a lot of times algae wafers are color enhancing whether they're sold that way or not. So I usually give everybody the krill at least two or three times a week in this tank and of course the tenopoma, that's his staple food. Uh, he gets krill pretty much every night. And then once I'm done feeding everybody the krill, I come back with two or three algae wafers and I crumble them up into the middle because I do have a bunch of plecos and you know little bottom dwelling fish that like the algae wafers more so than they would the shrimp so as I started saying I've put the uh, mineral stones into the canister filter not directly into the tank I have put them directly into my 125 native tank and I've not yet checked the pH or hardness or anything I haven't done any testing on that tank at all I've just put them in the tank and I haven't really worried about it with this tank I only put a small handful in maybe less than a quarter of what I put in my native tank so I didn't put a lot in this tank and I tested the pH after um, the water change and it was 6.6 .6, and I tested it again this afternoon and it was still 6.6 .6, so it hasn't brought the pH up any I did check the carbonate hardness and the general hardness and they're still both sitting at zero and this stuff's not supposed to affect your hardness or pH or anything. It's only supposed to remineralize what needs to be there to kind of get your tank back to where it is. So, again, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet with the chemistry thing, uh, with, the, with, with this aspect of water chemistry at least. And I'm not 100% sure what I'm looking at yet. The testing I'm doing is not telling me a whole lot of anything. What it's telling me is that nothing dramatic is changing in the tank so far, so I don't really have to worry about um, you know, the fish being shocked by the pH or the water suddenly becoming very hard over a period of a day or two. But I am keeping my eye on it. I am checking the pH. I will be doing that at least on a daily basis for a little while. Uh, I'll be checking the water hardness. And then as I learn and read about the uh, redox potential and the electrical conductivity, 
uh, I will be looking into that a little bit more and finding out what I can find out from that. Because what I'm finding out from the testing I do, I'm not seeing anything. You know, that doesn't mean nothing's happening. Obviously, something's happening. That you don't put, you know, an additive in your tank and not have it do something. I'm just not testing the proper tests that show me what it's doing yet, and I don't have a full enough understanding of what it's doing uh, to know exactly even what to look for at this point. So I know that's kind of vague, but, you know, that's where I am right now, and this is just one aspect of water chemistry that I've never bothered to look into. You know, I never studied high, uh, chemistry in high school uh, or anything. I've never taken a day of chemistry in my life, so I'm pretty much starting from scratch going into most of this stuff. Um, and again, this is just one aspect of it I've never really bothered to look into because this is getting much more into the chemistry uh, aspect of it. So we'll see. As I said, time will tell. I'll figure out what's going on in there eventually. And this probably will be the key to me getting my water sorted out. I always talk about having really odd water. And I always uh, blame my sodium levels on... It just cracks me up the way that catfish chases those loaches around. I always blame my sodium levels on, you know, unexpected deaths or the way fish have a hard time adapting to my water when I bring them home from the, the fish store. You know, fish that you would think would do well in, in my waters kind of don't. And I've always sort of chalked that up to the amount of sodium in my water. But I've learned recently that the amount of sodium in my water really isn't that much when you, when you look at it. Just even a teaspoon of aquarium salt per gallon of water, which is you know, a fairly low dosage by most people's standards, that's way more sodium than I've got in my water. So I, I really don't have high levels of sodium in my water. And I've also begun to realize that I think the lack of calcium and magnesium in my water is probably more of a significant health risk to the fish than my elevated levels, if you will, of sodium. Even again, they're, they're not that high, but in my mind, I've got these elevated levels of sodium, and I've always sort of blamed that on what's been doing, you know, unexpected damage to my fish. I've always said if the fish can adapt and make it for a month or two, they usually do okay from then on, but it's the getting used to my water part uh, that fish have a hard time with. And I really think that I'm, I'm starting to kind of hone in on what's going on with that. And again, I think it's a lack of stuff in my water rather than, you know, the addition of something in my water. So make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss all of the videos that will be upcoming as I sort my way through this. I always say that, you know, I'm no expert or anything by any means. And I'm simply documenting my journey through my you know, fish keeping experience and hobby, so I feel like I'm about to embark on the next chapter of learning about my aquariums and all that stuff, and if you want to see what I go through as I learn it, then subscribe, and you won't miss any of that that I got coming up or anything else, so don't forget this one is my 125, not to be confused with my aforementioned 125 gallon native tank, so thanks again for watching this one, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you real soon on the next one.